Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. Um, welcome to your Yoga Solutions live broadcast with me, Mark J. Aquaviva, on this um, chilly Wednesday morning, uh, the 8th of June, 2022. I hope you're doing wonderfully wherever you are. <coughs> and yeah, today um, I wanted to cover uh, the issue of tight hamstrings. It's, it's quite a common thing, um, a common experience, especially for men, um, a little more um, habitually, uh, and it's to do with how you support yourself usually. Uh, I'll just give you a, a brief kind of overview of perhaps the source of the problem. Um, uh, now, uh, what do hamstrings do? Um, for, for most people, they they are kind of employed to um, pull you down from behind in order to be upright, in order to stay supported. So when you're standing, if you, if you find you have a sort of tension around the, uh, underneath your sit bones, uh, when you're standing with your legs straight, it, it, I'm not saying anything, this is wrong or anything, it's just what, you know, it's uh, postural um, strategies, I suppose. Um, so, the, the yeah if the hamstrings are kind of tense when you stand and you feel a tension around the, the buttocks and um, that's you're using them for support which is not wrong but um, if for example when you do four bends um, that continues to be in place as in you are reaching for the ground but at the same time your hamstrings are being used to pull you to the ground behind you, the result is a strain on the back. The result is a strain on the back. So people that do that tend to feel very pulled in the lower back and sometimes mistake that feeling for for the stretch that they need, which is quite dangerous. Um, and the other thing that will be experienced is, well, my hamstrings won't let me get to the ground, you see? So that, that, that can be the source of the thing that, um, will translate, uh, that will transfer to when you sit. So, you know, when, when you, if you were to sit with your legs out straight, many people experience something like that, where they feel heavy uh, in the backwards direction. And that would be the hamstrings being used to try to hold you up. But of course, in that situation, it doesn't really work. It just makes it hard for you. Um, so what's the solution? Well, the, the first solution for tight hamstrings is to put yourself in a situation where they don't need to do that job and you feel comfortable. So um, I like to work with uh, reclining leg extensions. Uh, I don't like to call them leg stretches because um, it implies something that, uh, well, it's going for a sensation really, rather than, rather than what you're actually trying to do. You try to work out how to straighten your legs um, with perhaps less restriction from the hamstrings. So a way of approaching if you would like to join me um, and it, it, you know if, if you have a particularly tight side and that, that's the thing um, that concerned me a little bit yesterday is if you if you have an imbalance in the tightness or, or support structure of your hamstrings, there could be a bit of a twist in the base of the spine. It's quite, it's quite possible, and uh, which can lead to um, sciatic symptoms like tingling um, and sort of deadness down the leg. But anyway, <clears throat> that aside, um, yeah, how do we, how do we, well, people think, how do we stretch the hamstrings? And um, if they're used to being tight and holding your weight uh, away from the ground, then that'll be an appropriate kind of ambition. But um, attacking the hamstrings whilst they're doing the job of supporting your weight doesn't work. But what you can do is find a better, uh, a better line of support through your bones and joints so that the hamstrings are not so required. And uh, lying on the ground can give you a, an experience of what it's like to have hamstrings that do actually yield. Um, 
which you can then take into standing up. Okay, um, <clears throat> so that, that, that's the point. So if you want to explore that with me, um, I like to be slightly on one side so that the leg that's in the air straightens, straightens more easily. There's lots of reasons for that, but I won't go into them now. Um, but just have a go at straightening your leg. And if you're someone that straightens the leg by pulling the kneecap up, you will meet resistance that will feel impossible to get past. Okay, so if you try and straighten the leg whilst holding onto your foot, and the way you straighten your leg is by pulling the knee back, you will meet impossible resistance. Okay, see if you notice that. What I'd like you to do to explore something nicer is to lie on your side, slightly curled up, so that your core can empty. Um, be aware of the foot on the ground because you're going to use that at some point. The um, supporting arm on the inside of the leg so you can catch its weight with your elbow but the hand on the outside of the foot so you can hang back from the foot and relax. That's the idea is to relax. And uh, uh, you know if, if you're uh, over here and this is heavy towards the ground you won't be able to relax if you're further back over here and it's heavy in the hip you won't be able to relax so find, find a place where it kind of um, allows you to settle in that the only thing really that you're doing is hooking your fingers over the foot and hanging back from it in your shoulder because that will give you a sense of kind of support from it's like you know if you're if you're using your hand for support and you hang back from it in the shoulder that brings you closer to the thing that you're touching so it supports you and you know you don't have to be aggressive you don't have to do it too much the main thing to do is to settle and release tension in this balance if you like and the outcome of doing so it, as you relax just the the kind of weight of this shoulder the, or the decision to support yourself from the hand uh, through that leg will give the bones back um, to the hip and if you know if provided the knee isn't heavy towards your chest you know so there's a sense of the knee is out in space not held there just from the way you organize things and that hanging back from the foot feeds back through to where the knee is but also allows the thigh bone to sit uh, more cleanly in the hip joint further back if you can visualize it sort of sitting further back in the hip itself if there's any uh, complications on the knee it's to do with the angle of your foot so you can play with the foot actually doing an outward action so sort of pointing away from you so that you've got something to hang back from and that should reorganize the knee uh, so that should reorganize things so that the knee isn't being twisted okay so essentially what you're doing is you're you're giving the hold of the leg back to the hip joint and you should start to feel a, well you have some sensations around the hip that may or may not be challenging but the thing is to feel the support through to the joint and then from the joint the weight of that leg can be given to the ground underneath you through the through the joint of the hip through the pelvis to the ground this leg now has grounded support okay you've got a foot that is expressing away from you so that it's something that you can rest from and feel supported by so between your hand and the foot you're supporting yourself and that two-way action is giving you a deeper connection through the pelvis uh, through the hip joint through the pelvis to the ground so if you want the leg to straighten all you have to do that now is use the ground there's the ground underneath that leg take a breath as you drop into the ground and then when you release the breath within yourself start to use that foot underneath you to send the foot in space and because you weren't uh, trying to pull on the hamstrings instead you were if 
this through the bones and joints expression of movement means you'll still feel the hamstrings you feel their sort of tensile integrity but you're not busy using your um, thigh muscles your knee muscles to resist to push back against the hamstrings instead you're using the ground underneath you to support through the entire structure the pelvis the thigh bone up to the foot and if you do it rhythmically following the release of the breath you also get an emptying in your core that moves away from the pelvis to give you more space for the hip so breath by breath if you find this kind of rhythmic pulsing relationship between the ground underneath the foot uh, the, the yeah the ground underneath the underneath foot and the space above the put in space so you're using the ground underneath you to move in space breath by breath you should find that within that rhythmic process the hamstring will be yielding now if you get to a place where the leg comfortably opens comfortably straightens without a locking of the knee muscles around the kneecap the way to invite the hamstring to actually stretch a little is not to straighten the leg more it's rather to rely on the support you've got so you've got the hand now hooking over the big toe or the all of the toes the foot itself and you've got a the way the way you hold the foot will make a difference if the wrist is involved in taking in the holding if the wrist is involved in the holding then you'll be able to rest back more cleanly in the shoulder that will challenge the hamstring and your job isn't to get the foot as close to your face as possible in fact it's quite the opposite as you firmly take hold of that foot but rest back from it your hand is holding and you rest back from it that will challenge the hamstring to open but the leg the foot wants to rest back in that direction away from the holding hand and that's a function of um, the foot itself a sort of opening of the foot will invite the ankle space to deepen away from you will invite the thigh space to deepen away from you and you can help it along if you put a hand on your thigh make sure it, the thigh is soft if it's not soft you're holding your leg up but you can help the bones move away from you as you rest your weight from the hand so you hang back from the foot it requires a strong a firm hand a strong grip but you relax uh, you use it for support so you're resting back and at the same time you know, the leg is resting back from the arm now the two together means you've got a soft thigh so it's not kind of um, attacking the knee joint you will be resting into the tensile integrity of the uh, hamstrings and all the tissue on the back of the leg basically that's that sling that travels over the back of the leg over the sole of the foot to where your fingers are is the thing that you're uh, actively leaning into for support and when you do that you should find the leg on the ground uh, finds the ground more easily and it, it'll be hard work for your uh, grip but relaxing for your limbs and the the hamstring will incrementally creep open not because you're stretching it but because it is relaxing and you are using it appropriately for support that action of the legs sweeping back not being pulled back by the thigh muscles but sweeping back into support is essentially the answer to hamstring issues and it's kind of how we use our leg the best way to use your legs in standing and the result is that the weight of this arm 
holding the foot is now supporting directly through the bones of the leg to the hip joint, which will free up the hip joint, cease the pull on the base of the spine, and therefore free up space within. So eventually you can relax. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of information, but um, the, the, the information was fundamentally there to counter the usual habit of uh, doing stuff um, to the body. You know, if uh, I see this quite a lot is where people sort of pull the, pull the thighs up, pull the ankle back to try and stretch the legs. It doesn't really do the job, it just shortens it at the front and makes the back a bit tense. If, if you want the hamstring to both relax and elongate, you need to give it its natural job, which is to be tensile support that you rest into. And as you rest into it, it will elongate to the length that's required. If you're working against it actively using your muscles to straighten the leg, then the muscles at the back just brace um, equivalently so that you're supported and there's no way of changing the, changing the sort of length of the thing. And the way that translates into uh, standing and forward bend, oops, that one, um, the way it translates into, well, let's do forward bend first, is instead of the thighs pulling the leg straight and then the hamstrings having to brace on the other side of that, you can have a sense of from the feet, the legs rest back into the sling of the back of the legs, including the hamstrings. The knee can the knee can rest into the sling of the hamstring. The thigh can rest back into the sling of the hamstring. And that requires, all, all that's required is that you are able to support yourself with the fronts of the feet. And then the whole of the limb can rest back into that sling, giving you space and softness at the front. And what's more is when you then give your weight down through those feet with the release of the breath, the core quite naturally engages to support the spine from within. If you can stay relaxed back through those legs with the weight forwards, as you breathe landing on those feet, the breath arrives to support you from within. So it feels like you're floating. So essentially you're resting into the space behind you and the sensation of stretch is simply you leaning into the tensile integrity of the backs of your legs. Okay, I hope that was uh, useful and interesting and uh, made some sort of sense of a different way of using your hamstrings. Um, basically, if you, if you use your hamstrings to pull your sit bones down to the ground, which is actually taught in yoga, then it's going to be very difficult to let that go because that's your support mechanism. And what's more, it leads to um, forward bends that are really quite dangerous for the base of the spine. Um, uh, I, know, I know that for, for a fact. Uh, I've experienced that and many people do. Um, uh, if you do strong forward bends, uh, as in forward bends with a lot of effort, uh, whilst with, with that particular pattern, you can cause problems around the base of the spine, including a prolapse disc. It's uh, relatively common to do that people do, thing that people do. So um, be careful of that. You want your hips to relax. You want your thigh bones to relax. And there's a, uh, the, the front of you needs to relax back in order to allow the space that you need to release the base of the spine and release the hips. Um, and the hamstrings taking control of things is a bit like your throat taking control of things at the other end. You're trying to hold everything up with your throat and people try and hold everything down with their hamstrings. Uh, and this other way of doing things where you kind of find support, you relax, you relax into the joint, that um, allows the muscles to stop gripping 
because they're not required for support. You're, you're supporting through the bones. And then with that situation going on where you are supported, the leg can relax away from the uh, support of the arm, provided that the arm is something that you rely on for support as well, as opposed to reaching, you know. If you rely on that arm for support, then the leg can rest back into it and, and you get this sort of re release that allows you to meet the natural support of the um, tensile integrity of the tissue behind you. So, and the, the result, basically the result is, is, is you get support through your joints. And um, when you find that, there are, there are ways of working that allows you to sustain that in the way that you move, you know? So, okay, that'll do. Um, yes, that'll do. Hope that answers the question around um, hamstrings. I know there's a lot of content there. Do, uh, if you want to experience this sort of thing um, directly, if you know, if you get anything out of these um, yoga solutions, uh, uh, sort of snippets, I suppose, then um, working with me directly is, is is so much more effective because I can respond to what I see. You know, it, it's about interpretation of information. The the, the way you um, what you experience from what I'm offering is limited to the um, to the interpretation. You know that you, you have a whole way of understanding the body at the moment that may or may not concur with what I'm talking about. And uh, when there's some when there's a sort of new thing, new way of looking at things, it's going to be it's, it's difficult to understand because you have to let go of the old way of looking at things in order to even see it. See it as a possibility, but if there's some sort of uh, resonance, if you if you can if you can experience something, if something if a light switches on on some level, and you want to experience the fullness of what that actually means, then come and work with me. Come and come and do one of my workshops. They're they're dirt cheap. Every Saturday, um, two and a half hours, and they work with whatever people on screen are interested in. And uh, if I can see what you're doing, then I can give you direct hints that will give you a, um, a direct somatic experience of what I mean, because I can see um, how it is currently being interpreted. Do you see what I mean? Anyway, um, yeah, come and work with me. And if, you, if you've got uh, something that you're worried about and you wanna make sure, or you wanna see if I'm fit, you know, um, then, uh, just uh, book a free 15 minute one-to-one -one with me. Uh, anyone can do that. Uh, you go onto my website, um, what is it? www.aquaviva.yoga forward slash book dash online. And you can sign up for a free 15 minute consultation, no obligation. And um, you can just have a chat with me and let me know what's going on and I'll, I'll see if I can help, okay? All right, that's in it from me. Um, I shall be here same time, same place next week if I can. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Much love now.